Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about CSAT scores. I don't know how many of you all have heard about the CSAT survey or the customer satisfaction ratio that we measure about customer satisfaction customers experience getting to the top level of best quality customers retention customers experience with us their requirement of their needs and their fulfillment of those requirements so all of that putting together there are a lot of surveys available in the market today we get confused of what exact survey should we select or there is also a confusion of how we are you supposed to use those surveys so today we are going to talk upon the most foolproof survey which is called the CSAT which is the customer satisfaction score. Now how to use it, how to go about it, what is it exactly, what pros and cons does it have, what effect will it make on the customer service, all about that is what we are going to talk in this video. So this is what we are all going to discuss about. I hope you take the most of the inputs and start using CSAT as soon as you look at the video. there are a lot of surveys available in the market now to go about a lot of things have ratings right from 1 to 10 some people have ratings in terms of smileys some people have rating in terms of rural or there are different kinds of surveys available now all these surveys finally come to a conclusion that how much satisfied is your customer it's very simple to give out services, it's very simple to sell your product. But at the end of the day, what's important is after doing the service, the after service plan, how successful as an organization are we when we talk about a success in the customer satisfaction ratio? So we are going to talk all about this in the video. I'm going to take you through what is exactly a C-score, how is it measured, what are the pros and cons of it, how can we help our service get better every day? How can we change and switch our surveys from numericals to smileys to jargons to whatever, etc. So basically, we can switch our surveys from numericals to jargons to smileys, whatever, etc. is available in the market today. Now, how do we get started? Let's first understand what do we really mean by the CSAT score. Friends, CSAT score is something where our customers come into our organization with a requirement. They have a customer needs, which is called the CNs, which is the customer needs. Now, we every day work upon satisfying those needs of the customers and requirements. Now, while we do that, we take care at most of what exactly can we give them back and what's the best result that can bring to us. Friends, I have also discussed this in the Cano model. In the Cano model, it is very simple, which I spoke in the last video that you've heard of mine. The Cano model gives you a brief idea on the product information or how well can you attribute to your product with various attributes in Cano model. So there are different types of models available right from improving your product quality to your service quality. Friends, remember, whenever we talk about customer service, it's always related to best quality service that we give to our customer. Now, how do we check that whether we have given the best quality? According to us, we have done our best. But what when it comes to the customer? So the feedback of the customer is what is the most important at the end of the day. Whenever you take a feedback from the customer, it's either in the form of questionnaire, it's either in a form of some survey, it's either in a form of some kind of rating that they give you, your organization, your service, product or whatever your brand. Now while they do this, it's very important for us to understand that where all areas or which all areas are they rating us on. So we as a whole set up a survey to understand whether these customers are satisfied in whatsoever area. Definitely I'll take you through what areas do we need to do this survey on. But the most important thing what I need to clarify or as a tip is that every organization should have this kind of process which gives a feedback, correct genuine feedback of customers back to the organization about each and everything right from the employee working there to the product to the service to the ambience, to everything. I'm going to basically help you on how to plan these surveys or how to rate yourself 
by your customers in the CSAT score. Now, when I say that they give you a feedback, what I try to say is that every day that we make an attempt to make our customers 100% satisfied, that is an attempt made by us from our end, which we understand that we are doing the level best. But is the customer getting what he wants or is he getting what you want? Friends, what we want, we likely feel that the customer would get that and that's what he wants, but that's not the case. There are many a times the customer comes with a different altogether feeling, a different demand, a different expectation from us. But does he get all that he needs is what we need to check. It's not only about a negative or a positive feedback. It's about whether we are able to satisfy his needs, his demands completely. So how do we do that? Do we go and talk to each and every customer personally? Do we chat with them or do we send them messages or do we have WhatsApp? So what do we really do? It's very difficult because you have thousands and lakhs of customers in an organization. Now in this way, it's very difficult to get to each and every customer personally, which normally supposed to do, but it's very difficult if you have a frontline management which is like 10 people online or 10 people on the front desk, how many each one of them is going to get in touch with just to take a feedback and how many customers genuinely really give you feedbacks like that. So in that case, there is something called a CSAT score which is customer satisfaction ratio score or a survey you can say which will help us to understand where we stand in terms of customer service quality. Now this are various ways of checking the customer satisfaction. It all depends on what exact questionnaire do you set for the customer or what exact answers do you expect from the customer. If you expect that the customer should talk about the ambience, the customer should talk about your product, your service, your quality, the front desk person whom he met, whatever. Whatsoever it is, you need to make a decent enough questionnaire which gives you an answer of all the needs of the customer which are satisfied or which are not. So this is what exactly we mean by CSAT score. It is all about knowing your customer better by helping yourself serve that customer better. So it can be in the ratio of 0 to 5, you know, there are different surveys. We will talk about each one. It can be numerical order, descending, ascending. It can be a smiley. It can be all over. So if you see the slides that are running behind me, you will realize that these are the different surveys that are on in the market. And it depends on what survey do we pick up as an organization. Surveys can be rated numerically from 0 to 10. That's how you can ask your customer to score your company or to score you or your services. It is calculated in terms of numericals which is more easier to calculate of where exactly as an average ratio we stand in the market. The big strength of this CSAT score is the simplicity of scoring your organization according to customers demands. Friends, this also can act as the interaction point between you and the customer. This is how you can strengthen your relationship with the customer for a very long period of time. This is how you can also get to know your customers better because when you always check, there'll be different sets of customers in every organization. Some sets of customers will be your loyal customers. Some would be discount customers. Some would be your regular walk-in customers who do not do any purchase, just walk-in. Some would be not very friendly, but do a lot of profits to your company. And some would be aggressive customers. Now, these are all the different sets of customers. While you interact with them, it will be very simple for you to understand in which category each customer would fall. And then taking the feedback would make sense. Because until and unless you don't really know what, where your customer is and how they are, and in which category do you rate them, it's very difficult to understand in what they rate you. So if you've seen my video on types of customers, you will come to know what all types of customers do we have walking every day in our organization. So friends, this is very simple process of understanding where your customer satisfaction is and how best you can do it. You can ask simple points because it's a very quick survey. So you can ask very simple points. The points or the questions are in terms of pointers. So majorly this survey is done in the form of questionnaire. So the more you ask questions, the more answers you would get to satisfy your customer service skills. 
so when you ask certain questions it's quick because it's very objective it's not like they have to write a big comment it's just a tick so a tick on a yes or no or a tick on rating or you know however you ask the question in that manner so it makes it very easy to ask 10 questions instead of five imagine if the survey was subjective where they need to actually write in each and every comment and each and every feedback it would have become very boring and the customer would have not given a feedback so friends that's the reason i always suggest that have a customer survey which will only have numericals which will be easy to get an average of where do you stand in terms of customer satisfaction so friends this is how you can help yourself with the customer satisfaction score now the most important point is when do we really use this customer satisfaction score so it's very easy to gauge a customer according to his expressions according to his body language or his talks or the way he talks or the way he describes about the service that he liked or disliked but what about a written survey where the customer actually rates your organization and the services that he's taken from you now when is it supposed to be done so i have been training in a lot of corporates and there normally the surveys i suggest to be done after the customer has taken the service so i would suggest to take surveys from a customer who's come at least five times in your organization so suppose if to give you an example if a customer is coming to a clinic where the customer has come for a dental checkup and now you need to know after five sittings of his dental checkups how does he feel about the services that you've provided now is the right time when the customer will tell you exactly what he feels about it first of all the customers come back to you because he's satisfied it's as simple as that and now if he's satisfied and come back to you what is it that keeps him coming back to you and he will also give a genuine feedback of what better can you do to pull the other customers back to you so someone whom you know for a very long period of time this is one of the customers those bunch where you can take those services feedbacks because they know your organization since they've come some point of time many times now other set of customers that we can also take feedbacks are the customers newly ones who've come just first time in your organization taken the service and after service you're taking a survey from them it's like not someone whom you know since a very long time that's also very important because at that given point of time we can actually check that how was our first initial service is it quite satisfactory for the customer to come back you can also ask a question like a pointer would you like to come back to our organization for the service xyz if the customer says yes or if the customer says yes extremely satisfied that is where you score yourself and you realize the customer would like to come back or would not like to come back also you can put points like would you refer people to the organization that's where you'll also come to know whether that customer is able to refer or not now this is a plus point to put schemes of like referral schemes where if the customer refers another customer he gets some bonus points and that's how you can satisfy your customer a bit but finally the services and your quality is something which will satisfy your customer at the end of the day and that's what you're going to be rated on not really the discounts and schemes that you offer so friends this is when i feel is the right time to ask your customer about the survey one is when your customer is quite old come sometimes in your organization and the other one where a fresh customer has taken just your first service and you're taking a survey after that the third point where you also can take the survey is when you know that a customer is a loyal customer which you've been seeing since years now now this survey would be a little different it would not be on the rating of your service or your quality it would be on the rating or rather asking questioning probing on how best can you take your services further so you can ask about your improvements your scope of improvement points of improvement areas of improvement to the customer where the customer now is a very genuine customer and would give you a genuine feedback friends a simple thing like not keeping the plant in the correct direction also can be a feedback from the customer i have been working in an organization as a trainer and i have seen customers coming up who love the ambience of the place telling to the customer service executives that please can you remove that pot from the window the window view is beautiful the pot is disturbing the view so these small tips or these small 
realizations which a customer has because they are now attached to the place so much it's like the second home they give you such genuine feedbacks which you've not been able to realize because you've been busy in handling lakhs of customers every day but the most bunch of the most genuine customers would definitely come up with a feedback like this which will be so helpful for you to improve your ambience by just moving that, that pot from one place to another so friends, this is when three areas where I feel the customer service ratio or survey should be the best when it would work. One is your loyal customer, one are your regular customer and the third are your fresh customers. But everything that you do, please see to it, you do after service and not before service. Before service, everything would be rated only by the looks. After service, it would be rated by quality. So this was according to the lifestyle moment or the interaction to the customer that you can use this survey in that place. The second point where you can use this survey is prior to renewal. Friends, when I say prior to renewal is, every year we come up with different schemes and discounts and different kinds of membership points or various things that every organization would have. Referral schemes, whatever it is. Now, every time that we do these renewals, maximum or majorly it happens once in a year from march to feb is the entire working of the annual year so every new scheme or every new discount starts from a financial year which is april so march being the end of the financial year it starts from april so every organization has their new schemes or discounts or any kind of references going on from the month of april and it ends to the month of february so this is the period time where I think before it is a renewal of the new year, it's very important then at that given point of time to take customer service because you've been following a particular pattern from April to February. So say from December to the next April would be a good time to take and capture all these survey views and then work upon it. Friends, there is no fun if you take a survey and you do not work on it. Customer satisfaction score is not just to take feedbacks, it's also to work on it in a much better way to make things much better. Imagine when a customer understands that what he has suggested is taken into consideration and you've started working on those points and lines, those customers are going to be amazingly happy. I'll give you a small example. I was working with an organization where the customers were not very happy with the uniform of those employees. The uniform was yellow and black. It was a yellow checks shirt and a black pant. Now it used to look like a taxi. So the customer rightly judged it and one of the customer who's been a loyal customer of that organization came up to the manager and said that why don't you realize that this uniform looks like a taxi. The combination is not good yellow and black and we like yeah really. So this feedback was given in December. Nothing can happen before the year ends, but the manager took it very seriously and changed the uniform into a little violetish checks and black pant, which was looking more professional. And that change was made from the month of April because that's how the financial year ends. So these kind of surveys, if done in the month of December, the organization would have three to four months to work on the survey because they cannot do anything before the financial year ends because we've already invested a lot of money as an organization. So friends, take this survey prior the renewal of the new year and that's how you can implement these surveys to your staff, to your services quality, whatsoever it is. So remember to take at least three months prior so it helps you for your future, at least for that year practically. Every customer would have changes, every customer would have different views and opinions. I'm not talking about do everything as everyone says, but at least something which really is genuine and can be done for your organizational growth and benefits and profit. Now friends, I don't know how many of you all have heard about secret survey. Have you heard about mystery audits? I'll tell you what it is. Mystery audits are the after service after survey. Many a times your customer service department or the people working in customer service department, your executives, the front line, they get in touch with the customers to understand how their feedback was. So just a call and say, ma'am, this is a call for a genuine feedback on how your customer satisfaction was when you came to our organization. 
or this is a general reminder of please filling in your surveys in your customer satisfaction list or the score. Now friends, while we do this, we also need to keep a check on our customer service people. So who will keep a check on them? So there are after service follow up surveys also, which will help us to understand whether our customer service department is working right or not. Now these surveys are especially for those who have given a interaction with the customers who have followed them with the survey form and then the survey forms after come into the bracket how well are they examined and how well are they used as a process. Who would keep this kind of eyes on the customer service department? Now there is something called mystery audits. So mystery auditors basically look like customers. They come to the organization like customers only. They work, they behave like customers. They've been given a questionnaire by the trainers. So I have done a lot of mystery audits. So when I have my students going into various organization, I give them a list of questions that they need to check on every customer service executive. Now when they go and check whether each and every customer service executive is doing the job, they see to it that all the questions are satisfied. Then as a customer, when they get a call on how was your experience, that call is recorded as an audit and then that record is then played in front of the customer service executive to show them that how were they placed, what is the scope of improvement, can they be better. This is how the organization can scrutinize your customer service department because I feel that's the most important department in your entire organization. Customers are our bosses. They are the ones who are paying us money and that's how we get our salaries. Each and every employee in the organization thinks that the boss is the one who pays the salary. No dear, it's the customer who pays you the salary. So it's very important for our customer satisfaction team, a customer service team to be up to the mark, to be the best in the entire department in our organization. And if we don't keep a check on them by doing certain surveys through our customers or fake customers or whatever you call them, it is not easy to understand whether how we stand in terms of customer service replies. Giving them service, improving on your service is definitely very common. But what about the after service follow up? Is it done? Is it in place? How do you come to know that? That's only when you do a survey on your customer service department. So friends, this is where these kind of surveys are also used. They are most important. That's the most important factor in your entire organization to take care of your customer service department first to understand whether the customers are satisfied or are they unsatisfied. Friends, now I would like to take you through different sites, different slides which talk about different kind of service that we can do while we do CSAT. So if you see behind me on the screen, you would see that there is a CSAT score which has different smileys in terms of parameters of your satisfaction level. So if you check correctly, there is a sad smiley in red, there is a happy smiley in yellow and in green there is a most happiest smiley. And there is a kind of arrow which would move from the sad to the happy to the very happy or very satisfied smiley. This is one way of rating your customer service satisfaction where the customers do not need to really objectively solve the questionnaire. Not very fruitful I would say because if the customer is not happy about a particular thing, how would you come to know? It's only whether you come to know whether the customer is sad, customer is happy or very happy. But what makes him happy or what makes him sad? Exact parameters is something which you would not come to know. So these kind of surveys are good in places where the customer satisfaction level doesn't depend on complete service upfront or complete product selling. And this would be just a simple interaction with the customer in terms of a small service or a small sector that he is covered up. So these kind of surveys are not really recognized in big corporates or restaurants or places where customers in and out on a regular basis. But yes, these surveys can work where a simple demand of customer satisfaction is to be asked by the employee to be done. So that's how we can use this kind of survey. One are the promoters and one are the detractors. So promoters are the one who actually go out and promote your brand. I would call them a loyal customer. Now these are the customers who go out and who talk about your brand, 
who promote your brand in some way or the other so that you can call them brand ambassadors. So these are the ones who are your promoters. And when you see detractors, now detractors are the people who actually do not go out and talk good or bad or don't talk anything at all. Especially celebrities. So when a celebrity goes to a place for any kind of service, say beauty service, because that's something that they need off and on, they never go and talk to anyone where they had gone to look better or beautiful. So they are your detractors, they are not your promoters because they would not want people to know where they go to look beautiful. So I'm just giving you an example. This is one category of detractors. There are promoters where a simple people, a simple person goes to a place, same the way I've spoken about the actors, beauty place, and would get something done on their face, maybe a service, and they're so happy that they go and tell the entire world about it, and they are your promoters customers who are passive customers now these customers not necessarily they have liked or not liked your service they are very very passive means they are the customers who do not like to interact with you for giving you any kind of feedback even if they give you feedback they're not the ones who go and give any kind of feedback to other friends or anyone they're just simply passive there's nothing like deteriorating but they're passive now how do you rate to understand this is also a kind of survey except the customer service to understand that how many detractors and how many promoters and how many passives do you have in your organization. Now this is a task to your customer service department also which we normally forget to do. We normally try to give our best in terms of surveys to the customer satisfaction level but what about internal ratio or internal survey. It's very important for your customer service department to rate themselves to understand that which customer in an organization works as your promoter, which customer in an organization works as your passive customer, which of them works as your detractors. So friends, in that case, these three different types of customers also need to be rated. So say a scale of 1 to 10, which you can see back on the slide, out of which you can see 1 to 6 act as your detractors. You can see 7 and 8 act as your passives and you can see 9 and 10 act as your promoters. So what have you come up to a ratio is 60% of your customers are your detractors, 20% are your passive customers and 20% are your promoters. So now you need to understand that you have to change your detrating customers ratio to your promoter customer ratio and how would you do that? So there is a formula for this which you can see on the screen. So the formula is net promoters detractors formula it goes from promoters minus your detractors into 100 which gives you in ratio of what detractors do you have how many promoters do you have and how do you improve on the scale so friends please have this kind of survey also done in your organization to understand what set of customers are you dealing with and which are the exact customers you need to take the feedbacks from it will help you in the long run to understand where will you stand in terms of customer satisfaction. Friends, this is another kind of survey which asks you how was your experience today with our service, with our brand, with our product or whatever it is. But how was your experience today? Now, in your screen back, you can see worst starts from 1 and best goes to 7. It can go to 10. It depends on every organization. But what I'm saying is the smaller level starts from 0 and then it increases to a greater level. And that's how you can rate. If you say my customer experience today was amazing, you would rate 7. If you say it was good, you would rate maybe 5. So average. If you say no, it was not good, the place was stinky, it would be 3. Which will help you to understand how the customer was satisfied with your service. So friends, this is the next kind of survey that you can do with the smileys to understand and a direct question of how satisfied are you with our service. Now if you see each smiley there are five different smileys instead of putting a questionnaire you can also do this by saying very unsatisfied, unsatisfied, neutral, satisfied and very satisfied. These are five different kind of smileys that you can actually tick and give the entire organization service a ratio. Now this is a direct question only related to the service that they've taken. Now friends, this kind of survey which you can see behind me is an exact example of the surveys specially used in a restaurant. If you go in a nice five-star restaurant, this is the kind of survey that they do to understand the speed of service. 
many a times there are customers who complain saying that the food took a lot of time to come the waiter has come and he's taken the order at least half an hour before and now after half an hour the food is coming sometimes they would say oh wow the food has come in five minutes that's also not what was wanted so it's very difficult to gauge your customer so then this kind of survey would help you to do that especially for the speed of your service and this is very famous for the customer service industry into restaurants which is into hospitality here the customer would be asked like was the time enough for the customer or the waiter to get into interaction was there enough time where the waiter come to you or did you sit for a very long time now you can also ask surveys like was the food served immediately or was the food not served immediately you can have parameters like too long too short not very long not very short neutral normal so these can help improve speed of service where the speed is necessary one example is the restaurant there are a lot of other examples also where we really find out where the speed is necessary like in a doctor's clinic when you go to a clinic and there are a lot of patients waiting here you can do a survey to ask your customers how long were they waiting so was the wait too long was the wait too short how much do you expect the wait to be how much time did the doctor take with you how much time the, did you really do the waiting before you go to doctor so all these surveys have to be done because it's not only service that you can gauge customers on it's also the pattern of service that you're giving right from your speed to your attending the customer to the after service to the after service after service of your customer service department so there are so many things and so many surveys which can be done which can help your organization to reach up to some given point in time especially so let's see now since we know all about customer satisfaction score let's see some pros and some cons some advantages some disadvantages which we can face through this csat score so next step of customer satisfaction score which after understanding the entire thing are the pros and cons you can see the slide behind me where we are talking about certain pros and certain cons there are advantage and disadvantage of every matter of fact that we do so while we understand what a customer satisfaction score is it's very important also to understand what exact questions are you asking your customer to rate you on a particular parameter now while i say we can use smileys emojis numerical rating all sorts of different variations of rating depending on what question do you really want to ask your customer if you want to ask a full proof questions which cannot be solved without a questionnaire like an objective it has to be in an objective form if you want to ask your customer which not required to be objective can help you out with certain emojis you can do that as well so friends it's very necessary to understand what kind of service are you putting in front of your customer the entire csat score can prove to be negative if there are wrong patterns of asking questions in your entire survey so it's very important to first do a survey yourself on what kind of questionnaire do you want to set for your customer let's look at a parameter of dissatisfaction or disadvantage of taking these surveys ahead let's see what kind of disadvantage can maximum we reach by using this type of csat scores friends the possible disadvantage of using the csat scores would include various customers of various different mindsets now suppose if you are rating your organization into different terms like terrible and amazing there can be people who actually would rate you at terrible and would rate you at amazing there are a lot of customers which would not like to put a very strong and extreme statement like horrible or amazing that's when they put fine or unsatisfactory or not much satisfied so friends it depends on each and every customer's mindset what that customer is going through at that particular point of time it also depends on how extreme or how passive your customer is it also depends on what kind of last touch point that customer had when he took your service so friends all your rating depends on the mindset and the interactions the services the quality and the last touch point that you had with your customer many point of time 
the customer who normally rates you as satisfied would sometimes rate you non-satisfied because the last experience was not that great. But that doesn't mean that the organization lacks in giving the quality experience. Maybe the customer would rate you according to the this time customer executive what he is faced. The executive was not the same one that he always used to face. So on that he can rate you. So there are different levels of customer satisfaction which we do not know what can be the parameters of his success or his satisfaction score. And that's how a customer rates each and every organization and service accordingly. So this is the maximum disadvantage you would get where suddenly your regular customer would talk saying I am not satisfied on particular thing or if something has gone really out of the blue the customer might say I am extremely satisfied someone who has not been satisfied for a very long period of time. So it's difficult it's very difficult to gauge each person each time you see that person and their personality. The person and the personality keeps changing when you see that person again and again. There are a lot of expectations which go on increasing every time a customer sees you and every time expects the good quality service from you better than the last time. That's when the score would not really vary or good hey by you. So it's okay I would say at the end of the day. Customer satisfaction score is very important to improvise on yourself. It's an improving point for the organization. Rather than understanding whether you've done the best or no, you keep doing the best. But at the end of the day, it gives you a scope of improvement. And that's why I feel every organization must have a good quality customer satisfaction score. Friends, who says better than Jared Spall? He says that every customer would have different parameters of rating each and every organization. So say amazing, beautiful, awesome, extraordinary, satisfactory. Now tell me which word out of the entire lot seems to be different. It's only satisfactory. Because at the end of the day, your customer would rate you on your satisfaction skills. Say if the customer says amazingly satisfactory or delightfully satisfied, this is something which is an extra bonus to your organization. So friends, every day we need to work on a customer satisfaction score which has to be amazingly satisfactory than just saying the boring word satisfactory. This would work your all dissatisfactions into satisfied so your disadvantages into advantages. Friends, do you know what comes as an end result of this customer satisfaction score? It is customer success. So when I say customer success, imagine a friend of yours talking to you last night saying that, wow, you know what, I went to this place. It was amazing. It was so delightful. The ambience was superb. The food was amazing. You need to go there at least once. Now that's what is extremely satisfied customer. When he goes to a friend and talks so high about a place, about an organization, about whatever it is. And suppose if the place is tangible, where you can actually recommend your and refer your friends and your family to go there. That's something that works on to be a customer success. So after your customer is 100% satisfied, that's where you win the success story of your organization. And then you can call your customer satisfaction ratio into customer success ratio. After talking about customer success, now we should understand why the customer matrix is so important. Imagine a friend of yours where they're recommending you to a place. Imagine the colleagues, your family, your relatives that recommend you to go to a particular place. Now that's where your customer success is measured. And it can be measured in terms of various things. Now customer matrix is extremely important because that at the end of the day gives you a complete understanding of your success rate of your customer success ratio and not really your customer satisfaction ratio. Every customer is a satisfied customer once he talks about your brand, your organization, your service to various people and at the end of the day he is a promoter or the brand ambassador of your brand. You don't need to pay extra for brand ambassadors. They are your brand ambassadors. Your customers are someone who pay the entire amount as a bill settlement for your own growth and behavior and profits. Imagine an organization running on the customer's base where your customer service is up to the mark and how much more can you earn out of that? That's what is respect and that's what everything has earned back. Friends, I believe that the customer is the center of everything. 
He is the one who rules the entire organization. He is the one who spreads the word of mouth to all his people around. He is the one who helps you to bring the customer satisfaction score into customer success story. So it's very important to understand why these matrices are so important. At the end of the day, we are all continuously talking about how to promote our business to a new level, which only a customer can help you to do. No matter how much you invest in your own business, it's always the returns that pays you. It's not the investment. So you say today I've invested whatever X amount of money which will give me return. It will not. It's the service that will pay you and not your investment. If you see friends behind me, this is what a customer service metrics look like. The matrix is actually tell you your promoters list. The matrix actually tell you your promoters list. They tell you your detractors list. And I feel that every customer needs to not be known by his expectations. It has to be an attitude with a lot of gratitude of customer servicing. It is not a service industry where you get paid for a nine to five job. It has to be in your blood. It has to be your attitude, your personality. Customer service is something no one can teach you, friends. These are techniques of customer service, but the customer service attitude is something which you need to have within. I've always said this, that it is an attitude. It's not a job process. So there is no OJT when you go to an organization. On-job trainings can be only done technically. These are certain life skills which are built within. So all the managers, again a small tip from my side, hire people with that kind of attitude of customer service within. Do not search for people who you would want to train on customer service. It is not fruitful and it is not possible. So friends, if you see behind me, there are different kinds of customer satisfaction ratio. This is one CSAT, which is a customer satisfaction score. There's also something called as net promoter score. There's also something called as revenue churn. Now, all these surveys are different kinds of surveys available in the market what you need to check is what suits you the best and these matrices are extremely important to turn your upsides down to turn the table round and to help you get into the market as the best quality service analysis which only a customer can help you so friends I feel I have given a lot of insight on customer service satisfaction. I've given a lot of insight on how to measure this, how can it be measured, what are the different parameters, the pros and cons, and also matrices, how important it is to handle these matrices. I suggest to all the organizations and all the customer service executives to take this as an attitude personally, take it as your personality, do not take it as a nine to five job. Dealing with customers is something dealing with your pockets every day. If they are not there, you don't get your salaries, they don't pay, your organization is not responsible for paying you at the end of the day, it's the service that you provide to your customer. So friends, do it well. I wish you all the best to go ahead, search for your revenue, search for the best service provider scoring survey in the market and get it on use immediately. Thank you so much friends for watching this video. Please stay tuned to Ikira and keep subscribing to our channel. Thank you.